So I've been binging Clone Wars. I haven't seen the show since it left Netflix. And even then, I didn't even watch it as much as I probably should, seeing how Season 7, which is said to be the final season, was coming out rather recently after the trailer, first trailer dropped. But I finally decided to binge the entire show from Season 1 all the way to Season 7. And my goodness, guys, this is a monumentally good show. This is one of my favorite probably my favorite thing the the prequels has ever given us it's honestly mind-boggling how great this show is if y'all don't know clone wars is an anthology series think like rogue one and solo and all those movies but an entire series it's not connected to any plot besides it's the clone wars we have battles and jedi and all that thing all the things that ben kenobi had talked about in a new hope you see in this show and one of my biggest fears revisiting this show is that I wouldn't appreciate it as much as I did before because I really like Clone Wars as a kid I watched the show every episode when it came out I was there unfortunately they canceled it after season seven but luckily we got the lost episodes in season six and that led us to season seven and I'll talk about season seven but I wanted to go through some of the seasons that I liked, and some seasons I'm not a big fan of. Let's start with the ones that I'm not a big fan of. Season 1, I will say, is definitely the worst season. It has some of the worst episodes of the entire show. My least favorite for a while was Bombad Jedi, which is obviously a Jar Jar censored episode. It is a bad episode. It has no connection further. And Jar Jar doesn't even make mention of this, though granted, after season one, he's barely in the rest of the show, he's only in a few other arcs. Some were actually fine, like I actually really enjoyed the Mon Calamari versus the Corrin arc in the beginning of season four. That was a great arc, one that I personally really enjoyed, but Jar Jar wasn't the saving grace of that, in that arc, let's just say that, but he was just part of it. But he didn't distract from the further plot that was going on, so it wasn't much of a distraction. But Bombad Jedi and Gungan General and all those episodes in season one, you can skip them. They mean absolutely nothing to the show. But my favorite episode of season one is still one of my top ten favorite episodes in the entire series, and you could probably guess it, it's Rookies. It's a clone-centered episode. In my opinion, that's my favorite kind of episodes. As much as I love the Jedi when they are in action, I'm more excited to see the endeavors that the clones are going through, how much they have to endure the war, how much they feel like the war is just making them feel more like slaves, how they feel like at what's going to happen at the end of the war, but in Rookies, we see some of these clones just starting out with the war, having a very blind sense to it, and just know that you had to fight, and that's it. But seeing how these characters grew through this episode, and then Echo and Fives furthering their growth throughout the entire show was great, and obviously we're going to get into spoilers with this series, you have been warned. But this episode has still one of my favorite deaths of the entire show, and that's Heavy. How Heavy Die was pretty badass, but also pretty sad, because I watched the show in chronological order. At first, and then once season four came around, I watched it regularly. But seasons one through three required so much care to actually watch it chronologically. And I had to first start off with the... Uh, uh, with Christopsis, I think that's how you pronounce the clan's name, that arc, but then it goes straight into the Domino Squad. And watching it from Clone Cadets, the beginning of season three, going back to season one, and watching how Echo 5, Heavy, Drapey, Cut Up, all these clones that we knew from Clone Cadets die, some of them die, and rookies. It's kind of emotional. It's kind of sad. And you wouldn't get that if you didn't watch it chronologically. That's also something that I'm not a big fan of. 
is that this show, as much as I love how they took care with this show, they did not care about timelines for the first few seasons. They did not give a shit about which episode goes where. If you look chronologically, the first official episode is in season two, episode 16. That's how massive this show can be sometimes that it feels kind of overwhelming. And then you realize we're back here. We're back to a point in time where you don't really care that much anymore. And that's what we thought of the Chrysopsis arc. We thought it would be finished with season one. But then we go to season two and we're back to that point. And it's like, what the hell? But that's a small issue aside. That's pretty much all my issues. Season one is not the greatest. There's some episodes that really stand out for me. But there's not really meaning to actually watching to season one. Even the finale is not that great. And it feels the less grand one. Season 2 picks up considerably in both quality and animation. Season 1 still was in that unfinished area for the first few episodes with this animation. It got better over time. You can tell that the creators had a bigger budget as they went along. But season 1's earliest episodes, they... Ooh, man, they, 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 look, they look bad. They honestly did. They still looked like the movie version. And it was not... Not that appealing, honestly. The worst of it was definitely in the downfall of a droid, the episode. The lighting, oh my god, it was blinding. It, it was trying to hide such terrible and stiff animation. But going on to season two, it picked up considerably in both quality and animation. The animation looks much more fluid and much more expression it comes from the face of each, each character. But season two, I would say it has some pretty good arcs. I personally really enjoyed the beginning to the Mandalore arc. Obviously, the season, not season, series goes on. It becomes probably the best arc of the entire show. And you don't even know it yet because you think it's just going to be a one-off political episode. But Obi-Wan in this arc makes this arc work so well because of his interplay with Satine, the Duchess of Mandalore. And knowing their past and knowing what they had to go through and knowing how Obi-Wan felt for Satine, how he felt such love and yet such distress because he knows the Jedi will not allow such tolerance. It's it's kind of fascinating to watch. I would recommend if you don't want to watch the entire series, start with this arc. This arc was a really good arc to start with. I'm not a big fan of the Boba Fett arc at the end. I personally think it's fun, but I don't know. It feels slower paced than the others, and the second episode in between R2 Comes Home wasn't my favorite, but it was nice to see a younger Boba Fett done right, unlike episode two, which that, yeah, sure. That, that, was, that, that, that was something. Ugh. Season 3 picks up considerably. It's maybe top 3 seasons. Top 2, maybe. It has some of my favorite arcs. Introduces some of my favorite arcs to continue with seasons 4, 5, 6, and 7. And it's... It's gorgeous, honestly. Season 3 is gorgeous to look at. My favorite arc from that season has got to be... Uh, the Mortis arc, seeing how the four Caesars were introduced, the son, the daughter, and the father, which we were all told that the son was going to be in Rise of Skywalker with Colin Trafalgaro's director's cut. I don't know. It, it was confusing then, and it's confusing now. But I really love what they did with the Mortis arc. I particularly love how Ahsoka was turned to her evil side, the dark side, and the duel between her, Anakin, and Obi-Wan, it was kind of heartbreaking to see. It has a lot, this show has a lot of heartbreaking moments. It was, it, it was a lot of emotions to take in. If you watch the show from the beginning to the very end and you connected with these characters and their bond, 
It's sad, and you'll see from season seven. But the Mortis arc was great. I particularly love the final episode, seeing Anakin see the future, and then reverting it back. Kind of a cheap point, but honestly, I think it was worth it. Was worth it for what we saw. I love the Citadel arc. I love the more clone-centric episodes, like Arc Troopers and Scene Ninety Nine, and oh, and I like they they uh, made tribute to Ninety Nine with uh, the Bad Batch at the beginning of Season Seven. Season Four was great. Seeing Maul return was obviously satisfying, and it's. It, it made sense for the show. It, I honestly did with the story it was telling and with Savage and uh, Ventress and all these other extended universe characters. It made sense that Maul would make, make it his re massive return. But in my opinion, my favorite arc of that season was definitely the Embarra arc. The Embarra arc, again, clone-centric episode. It, 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 it was such an intense and emotional arc particularly Carnage of Krell, which is one of my favorite episodes of the entire series, seeing Rex battle against his own battalion, and seeing him kill clones that he didn't even think were clones. That was a damn emotional scene, honestly. I think it was pulled off masterfully. Season 5, though, was probably my favorite, arc, my favorite season of the bunch. It has some of my favorite episodes of the entire series, the Lawless for a while was my favorite, but then as rewatching, I think The Wrong Jedi for a while was my favorite. The final episode before it was canceled. It was a brilliant end for the show for its time. Season six, I would say, is lower. It's bottom three, I would say, because it has, still has a mixed bag of arcs. Season, I mean, the, uh, the arcs with uh, the Senators and with Jar Jar, obviously, so you can skip those. But the nine, the sixty, uh, Order sixty six arc, great. I love scene five. It was emotional to see him die, knowing that he had the information to save the Jedi. But it was such a emotional and investing arc. But then we have Yoda's arc, and I thought it was brilliant for a time that we started the show with a Yoda centric episode. And then we ended with a Yoda centric arc because we haven't seen much of him in action besides just that one episode at the beginning of the series. But seeing him know the future of the Jedi and confronting Sith apprentices of the past like Darth Bane was great seeing Mark Hamill reprise like Star Wars and having his voice talents. It was. It was definitely satisfying, and it was a satisfying end for a while, but then we move on to season seven. For a while, I... It wasn't the greatest. I'm fine with the Bad Batch, but man, that second arc was absolutely terrible. I mean, absolutely bad. Seeing how Ahsoka... I mean, seeing Ahsoka was great, and seeing her come back was satisfying. But that's the only thing that kept me invested in that four episode arc. Jesus. Granted, I'm not as mad at it as others because I wasn't watching it weekly. I was binging the rest of the show and it all led up to the end of season seven for me. Where we get into what is, in my opinion, the absolute best arc of the entire show oh my god it's so satisfying to see how the series concluded with those four episodes I was already emotional with the beginning the first arc how Ahsoka returned to Anakin and Obi-Wan and Rex and seeing their into play and the siege of Mandalore beginning Maul returning the second episode is contender for the best episode of the entire series. Seeing Ray Park return with his mocap performance was great. I w it was definitely the best duel in any animated Star Wars anything. It wasn't as emotionally investing as say the Vader versus Ahsoka are, uh, battle in Rebels, but it was up there to being the best choreographed duel in Star Wars history. But the third episode, in my opinion, 
It's the best episode of the entire show's run. Seeing Rex try to try to desert from his order how he wanted to not kill Ahsoka and seeing him tear up when he turned his guns towards her uh, I, I, I'm not gonna lie it got me teary eyed honestly and seeing how much pain Ahsoka was going through seeing her own friends and battalions turn on her without even a blink of an eye it was so emotional, and honestly, if I didn't binge the show, I think I wouldn't have been this emotionally tied to Ahsoka and Rex's bond. But seeing how I watched the entire show, and going into uh, going to Star Wars Rebels and spoilers, they're in it too, and then just them trying to find a way to escape this order how they realized that there's no turning back now and seeing how they had to even kill their own friends how rex had to kill his own brothers it was such a moral dilemma that it kind of got me thinking and it was honestly such a emotional payoff to a decades long series and then we come to the final episode the final episode, as, even though I don't think it's my favorite of the entire show's run, the ending to the episode was honestly very emotional. When we see the cruiser crash, we see the aftermath, and we see Rex and Ahsoka looking on to their dead brothers, and then seeing Jesse, Jesse, his helmet on a pike, Again, if I didn't binge this series, I wouldn't have been emotional, but seeing how much he went through and how much we got attached to him, particularly in the Umbara arc, seeing him and Fives on trial for doing the right thing, but disobeying orders, kind of a pay, kind of pay off to this episode when Rex disobeyed his own orders. You could say that Jesse and Fives, more or less Jesse right now, because he lived, how Jesse kind of inspired Rex to not go through with it, even though, yeah, his chip was gone, but you can also think, is Jesse also on board? So that can also mean that Jesse kind of had an influence on Rick and Rex. It was honestly so emotional to see. But then we come to the very end with Vader, actual Vader, not Anakin anymore. This is the first and only time we see Vader in the show. And him walking towards the cruiser, looking down and spotting Ahsoka's lightsaber, she's left. And you can kind of see, I think if you look closely enough, you can see Anakin's eyes through that helmet. And you can kind of see him tear up. It was honestly... A heartbreaking conclusion to a 12 year long series hopefully it is the conclusion to this series you can continue on with more shows but this series needs to end here i think if you can continue if you can continue it more fine but it wouldn't this ending wouldn't be as emotional as it is right now honestly Star Wars The Clone Wars is a very investing, engaging, amazing show that honestly I love so much. If it didn't have bad episodes at the beginning and season one being as mediocre as it was, you would have a masterful, masterful Star Wars show on your hand. But right now it was a damn great series. On par with The Mandalorian for being my favorite Star Wars show of all time, but it's also my favorite thing the prequels has ever given us. It's on par with the 2003 Clone Wars. It may even surpass it. I'm going to give Star Wars The Clone Wars a 9 out of 10. So that's my review of Clone Wars. I think you all kind of expected me to talk about the show eventually, knowing what's going on with Star Wars right now. 
but I wanted to get my review out as soon as possible for this entire show and this season and my reaction to it. So that's my thoughts on it. What are you guys thoughts on particularly the final episode? I want to know what you guys thought of that. But in my opinion, this is a great show. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. And I'll see you all later, recruits. Take care.